So let's talk about muscle movement properties. Muscle movement properties. So I'm going to divide muscle movement properties into two types. Intrinsic and extrinsic. By intrinsic, I mean the movement properties kind of within the muscle tissue itself. And by extrinsic, I mean the movement properties caused by the muscle tissue or the result of the intrinsic muscle movement. So let's go into detail. Muscle movement properties intrinsic. Number one, contractile. Muscles contract. This is cool. So we have all of these um, protein fibers, proteinaceous fibers that are organized in little rows and they are partnered with nerves, motor nerves, which say on or off. So the on-off property uh, basically results in the muscle fibers getting shorter from end to end. So that's what we call contraction. Well, this is a pretty amazing property. You don't see a tree doing it. Okay, so muscle tissue contracts uh, within itself. So that's a property, a movement property of muscles. Just do a little mouse. Muscle is just musculos, it just means a mouse, right? So it's just a little mouse skidding around inside. It's just a little mouse. Okay, <laughs> so um, now what enables this to be a meaningful property, right? is that there's differential movement. Now, by differential movement, I mean that this muscle fiber can shorten next door to its neighbor that is still lengthened, right? That hasn't shortened. So if this one shortens and this one stays the same, if this one is on and this one is off, somehow the relationship between the two has to be distensible. Right? It has to be, they has to shear relative to each other. So literally every muscle fiber in your body is wrapped in connective tissue, right? That's of kind of a, a slippery, uh, membranous nature that allows for a contraction to take place without dragging the other one with it. Because if it did drag the other one with it, you wouldn't move in a fluid way. You would move through spasms, right? One nerve would contract and everything would go. Right? But it doesn't work that way. We can move smoothly and beautifully and we can dance and we can express ourselves, right? Because we have differential movement between contractile fibers in our muscle tissue. So given that we can have this contraction in our muscle fibers, what happens in the big picture? Let's talk about the extrinsic movement properties. In the big picture, we have joint action. So the interesting thing about muscle tissues is that they cross joints. So what's a joint? A joint is the joining of your bones. So bone here, bone here, and we call the in-between spot a joint. That's just our common language. Now the muscle tissue crosses the joints, whatever joint you have, and there's a lot of them because you've got a whole gaggle of bones in your body, right? The whole skeleton in there. And all of the all of the differences in between the ends of the bones or the joints, the muscles cross those so that when those muscle fibers contract, bones move through space. This is crazy, right? Our bones move through space. It's an extrinsic expression of the movement property of the muscle tissue that our joints move through space. Now what of it? So what? Our joints move through space. It allows us to express ourselves. So our entire emotional life, right? Our, our, our entire way of communicating with each other, of gesticulating, of expressing ourselves, of, of embodying our emotional life is a function, in part, of the extrinsic properties of muscle tissues moving joints through space so we can say, ha ha, that's amazing! Or we can be like, oh no! All this is an expression Right? of the extrinsic movement properties of muscles moving our joints through space and, and giving our emotional life dimension, literally, so that we're, we're um, in relationship with one another, right? depending upon how we place our bodies, right? in hugs or in distance or in... All of these things are representations of the extrinsic movement properties of the muscle tissue. So expression and emotion, right? are actually at a very microscopic level a function of the capacity of muscles to have differential movement 
as the fibers contract. So this is just a little inside story on muscle movement. I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate your watching. Thanks for studying with me. If you'd like to learn more, visit me at gilhedley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.